Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. We're back with your favorite podcast, Lucas, Tigers, and Bronze. Oh, my. I got to give you a shout out because it's unbelievable how much I learned from you, Cage. How you're able to give attention to everyone and show up day after day after day. Because, guys, it's not, it's not easy what we do. I, I'm, it's not easy. And Cage shows up 100% every day and... With that, I want to welcome you guys back to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronze Oh My. How you Dude, doing, Vic? Love it. Listen, this is easy, man. I love showing off with Luca Nation, especially because, you know, we talk about sports. So this is fun, man. This is stuff we even talk about anyway. And, you know, the world of sports for these almost six months, we're, we're approaching six months here, but the world of sports for the, the six months we've been doing this, they've given us no shortage of things to talk about. From bubbles to delays to, you know, championships to starts of seasons, ends of seasons, restarts of seasons. We have plenty of stuff going down. So, you know, it's definitely uh, definitely easy stuff. You see the Sixers? You see the Sixers get fined for not reporting Simmons' injury? No, I didn't see that. But yeah, on, yeah. A, on a scale from 1 to 10, as an investor, uh-huh. you can't use the number 7. How scared are you about the current NBA season? half maybe one one and a half something like that like real light real light um can't use it on seven that's funny no i'm not scared about it at all because um you know they know what they're doing i mean look baseball and football showed you just play through it if you have to um so, you know basketball showed you can bubble up if you need to i mean i don't think they need to do that um you know what's funny coming out of this you know the news here is you got a million different stories just over the weekend. The NBA was saying we're not pausing. Now they're talking about potentially pausing. Some people were talking about expanding the rosters. You know, they have 17, 15 full time, two players on the two ways. Um, and uh, they were talking about expanding it. Frank Vogel came out and was like, listen, if everybody would just follow the damn protocols, we wouldn't need to expand rosters. 17 is enough. There shouldn't be a situation where you don't have eight people. If you, if you get to that situation, somebody's doing something wrong, not following the rules, which, you know, a little dissension in the ranks, right? It's, it's always fun to see that, I guess. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about the season as an investor. They'll play the season. You know, they'll get the season in. You know, if they have to, if they have to, you know, delay some games or you know, hit the pause button for a second, that's all fine and, and well. They'll, they'll get through the season. So, so then, from an investor perspective, you know, are you looking and are you thinking just play things as usual? Are you a little bit hesitant in moving NBA money into baseball and other things? How are you playing it then? Are you? 100, 100 miles an hour ahead. What are you thinking about that way? Yeah, so, I mean, listen, my baseball, the basketball plays for me for this year anyway on the rookie class, like prospecting and that kind of stuff, you know, there's really nothing to buy for this year's rookie class anyway. So that's, you know, that makes it a little bit easier, right? So, um, you know, if they, let's, just, let's just, you know, play it out. If there was a doomsday scenario and they had to pause for a month, well, Panini's probably not pausing. So all that'll mean is, you know, we'll get more basketball games with these guys actually, you know, having cards to watch them play and have more games with the cards out and invest in them. So, you know, for, for the rookie class for this year, it's almost a, a you know, a non-issue. You know they're going to play the season. For the non-rookies, it, you know, the same kind of thing. If they play the games in in uh, in February instead of January or, you know, whatever that whatever it may wind up happening, first of all, let me just take a, a, a real quick pause. I don't think they're going to delay anything. I mean, I think that they're going to probably – you know, meet, they'll probably, you know, uh, come up with new protocols, um, probably come up with, you know, more rigid testing. I've seen articles that run the gamut of thought process, even, you know, one as far as saying, just get them all vaccines, which would really cause some problems, right? The NBA is very aware of the, uh, you know, their own public persona, right? So, but I've seen, you know, everybody and their mom has kind of chimed in on this one. But truth of the matter is the last public thing that came out from the NBA was they're not pausing, you know, but even if they do, like I said, you know, we, we, we had a, a, a several month pause. We came out of that roaring and on fire and the cards kind of haven't slowed down since. So um, am I looking at baseball though? Yes. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent am looking at baseball cards and my play today will be a baseball play for you guys. Definitely. Okay. okay. Well, um, let me, let me finish with this. I'll lead into my plan. And then what, yeah. we'll, oh, but, okay, Chris Dingus was supposed to come back tonight. That uh-huh. game got postponed. But from a perspective of Luca, and, and I don't know how much of you of his game you watched, he came back this season. He has like a little step back a dirk, kind of yeah. mid-range game now. Luca's such an interesting player, Cage. And I, I'd love to hear your analysis on him as just like an overall player pretending you're a scout, but it almost seems like he's never out of control. He's it's not true. 
He's so Here's my deal. Yeah, he is. He looks slow. He looks out of shape. His face is red. You know, like he looks like a little pudgier than he looks. But here's what's funny. If you look at the stats, Luca and Trey are basically putting up similar stats to what they put up last year. Okay? Luca is filling the stat sheet, right? He, you know, he's filling the assists and the rebounds. They, you know, they're both around what they were doing last year. Trey's slightly fallen off. But the hobby has kind of fallen more out of love with Trey, I think, just me, than they have with Luca. I mean, Luca hasn't taken loop, you know, leaps and bounds forward. He's not averaging 35 points a game. Um, especially, you know, you would think if there was a time for him to do it, it would be with KP out and with nobody else on their offense there. Um, I know that's not what you ask, but, I mean, the truth is, yes, he's amazing. And uh, it's, it's effortless. If you watch enough of his games, it's funny because I've told people – to watch it, people who are casual fans, and they'll turn it on and they'll watch him. And they'll watch in the third quarter, I'll get a text say, you know, what's so special about this guy? Right. And I'm like, wait to see what the stats say at the end of the game. And they'll text me at the fourth quarter, like, why is everyone in love with this guy? And then at the you know, the game will end and they'll text and say, That was the quietest 30 point triple double I've ever seen. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Lamelo has a 30 point triple double and everybody's going crazy because it's you know the greatest thing in the world. I mean, Luca literally can lace up and do that every night. Mm-hmm. You know, there's potential to do it every Quietly, night. So, right? I mean, yeah. And I actually think, and my play today is interesting. I'm going to go with the select PSA 10 Luca. Uh, that's my play like for it. today. And I, I've watched a lot of the Dallas Mavs games. I've watched Luca. He, he's an anomaly. He kind of reminds me, like, I'm, I'm going back and I'm watching Larry Bird and I'm like, Different era, but it's so interesting to watch how they're never out of control. They're always on balance. It doesn't feel like they're moving really fast, but the defender can never stay in front of them, right? Because really in basketball, yep. the number one thing is getting by your initial defender. And a lot of it is more angles than it is speed and quickness, which is yep. kind of fascinating to think about. Um, but they're, they're tr- double and triple teaming them. And he's still putting up triple doubles with who's the second best scorer, Tim Hardaway? Yeah. Kleba, yeah. Kleba yeah, is now getting Kleba. consideration for most underrated player in the NBA. I mean, Max Josh Kleba. Richardson is an average NBA player at best, and Luca is has him three games out of first place. And I think with Porzingis back, it's going to actually improve Luca's numbers. Oh, definitely. They can't quadruple team him. They can't quadruple <laughs> exactly. And um, I think it's an interesting thing to talk about Luca and Trey because. Trey went from kind of hobby darling in the first week of the season to a little bit out of sight, out of mind. And granted, I think it's a bit unfair to him because a few of his players are out. You know, Rondo's out. Uh, I think it is it Bogdanovich is out as well with uh, ankle injury. But the, the Hawks are dealing with some injuries. But it seems like the hobby's fallen out of love with Trey. Whereas Luca, you know, his cards have fallen as well. His, his prison PSA 10 was a $2,000 card before season started. And now it's 1700 I saw some offers for sixteen fifty, but my play today is the PSA ten select, and that card is eight hundred nine hundred bucks on eBay. So I'm imagining you get it for eight hundred offline. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a significantly lower pop card. We've already talked about how select is kind of becoming the brand. Honestly, I think Luca is someone that's going to kick it into gear more and more and more as the season kind of rolls along. Right? He's he does look a little pudgy. It looks like he came in a little bit out of shape. Uh, I mean, that's subjective because yeah. it looks like he's still putting up amazing numbers. I think he's going to play himself into shape much more throughout the season. And my prediction before anything happened, before this podcast, before the season started, was he's going to be MVP. I'm doubling down, and I think that select card is is a really interesting play. If you could afford the silver, 100% go for it. Wow. The Giannis yeah. silver uh, select from 2013, which I actually think will have a similar pop. Um or, or at least much closer than the, the base prisms is a nine ten thousand dollar card so wow. yeah and i think the luca base luca base select at a psa 10 is, is a really 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 good investment i'm doubling down on my luca i like it i like you know it's almost like a buy the, buy the dip kind of play almost right you know like luca there was a lot of preseason hype he's come out you know the team hasn't looked that great he's had some kp injuries you know this is that dip this is that opportunity you might say it's with trey also if this is that buy that dip you know where people were where there was all that pent up like built up before the season boom 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 and now it's taking a little dip and you know if he performs if he's on mvp level it'll go back up and you know it's funny I have a little fun story for you guys, right? If everybody believes in the market, if everybody believes in sports cards, that dip there, that's an important thing, right? Because 
what I'm going to tell you about today, it's a, it's a, it's a long story. It's don't have your money on the sidelines if you believe in the sports card market. Have your money in the game, right? Literally, have your money in the games that we follow. The same thing, if you believe in Luca, if you think Luca is the player of the future, then your money is better off in that card, appreciating over time. And you could say that as prices continue to adjust, better to have that money in that card because last year that card was eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Now it's it was two two thousand, but it's sixteen hundred. Maybe next season, you know, it'll be three thousand. Who knows, right? So this is the point. So let me give you an example of this, right? On my play today. My play today is a perfect example of having your money in the cards, having your money in the game, even when your guy does not perform. So before we even talked about doing a podcast, before last baseball season, before COVID craziness, before any of this stuff, before the shortened season, um, in a group that Andrew and I were in, I was talking up a Yankee star who came in the top three of rookie of the year in 2018, right? A stud Yankee player. Um, it, was, it was Shohei Otani, Gleyber Torres, and this guy were the top three for Rookie of the Year in the American League. And he came up and had almost 100 RBI. I think he had 27 home runs. He had a ton of doubles. Um, you know, he, he was basically like one of these guys that you're like, wow, he came out of nowhere. But he got injured, right? And Gio Urshela showed up and played a stellar third base. People thought he would be a defensive replacement, but it turned out that he was a pretty good offensive player. Coming into last year, um, Miguel Andujar, who was my pick, was you know going to compete for third base. Leading into the season last year, his PSA 10 card. Now both around the same price, but I was just talking about the paper 2000, you know, 2018 tops. I'll get the I'll get the number of the card now. If you give me a second here, I want to make sure I'm quoting you the right uh, the right card. His uh, his tops card is number 305. So just. 2018 tops card number 305 there's also by the way um a chrome version of this it's uh psa 10 chrome card number 14 if you're a chrome person instead but leading into the season last year i thought hey this guy was going to do well i thought this guy was going to play well i thought this guy was going to you know maybe get his job back they wanted his bat in the lineup so much that they were working him out at first pace working him out in the outfield and I was picking up his PSA 10 cards in the offseason leading into last year for $17. Okay. And I was buying them in bulk, hoping that, you know, this was going to um, appreciate he was going to come back in and he was going to, you know, build on the, the season he had. Well, it didn't work out that well for him this past year. Um, you know, he got into a, a bunch of games. There was a shortened season. And, um, you know, he wound up spending the majority of that uh, COVID shortened season in the alternate site not really getting into the lineup, never really getting into a group. You know, the alternate site, that was when, you know, when they set up players on, like, it was basically like, you know, a farm team because they didn't have AAA ball, you know, in case anybody came down with, with COVID. They were able to use that alternate site players to play. Um, you know, when he played, I think he batted like 240-something, 247. He really didn't get a chance to, you know, to get going. Like a lot of people didn't last year, but he didn't really even get a chance. Um, so what's the point? The point is, that right now, those cards, which were $17, are now 25 all right, which if you think about the math on it, right? I mean, you know, what is that? 30, 40, 45% increase on those cards for a year where a guy who um, not only did he not play well, you could say he didn't even play, right? Mm -hmm. And the chances he did get, he didn't really perform that well. Is that just the rising tides who lifts all, all ships? That's guys? it, right? It's get keep your money in the game while the stuff is going well. You know, it's there. And, and, I think, and this is why it's my play today, if you're able to, you know, find, there are a couple of them, $25 or best offer. You guys have quantity of them, both the Chrome number 14 and the, the regular tops number 305. Um, I think this is a sneaky play. So last week we talked about Gavin Lux's tops rookie card, right? We said, all right, that might be a way to play. It was like $36 was, you know, you could buy them in quantity. I had, I had like, one guy had like 80 of them, you know, he got a huge quantity of them. Um and I'm like, I don't know if he's going to get in. You know, the, the Dodgers don't really have room for him. But if he does get in, that card could go from 36 to 70 in a second. Well, people are looking at this stuff now. People are looking at Gavin Lux because no, that, that guy's 80 cards, they're all gone. Mm -hmm. Somebody bought them all. 
And now I'm looking at lots of five of them selling for 220, 225, which means the cards, you know, gone from 36 to mid 40s already, you know, because people are looking at baseball. Miguel Andujar is somebody that you really start, you got to start looking to find. You know what I mean? Because he's now almost forgotten. He's been out of it for a year and a half with an injury and this, and Gio Urshela has taken over the third base. But here's why I think it's a fun play. First of all, you get the card for 20 bucks, probably. You know, you buy it in quantity or you buy it off eBay, you get the card for $20. It, it, this is a, this a PSA 10, too, right? PSA 10. PSA 10. Yeah. So that's, you know, including the grading price, basically. You're getting it for the price mm-hmm. of grading, pretty much, right? Um, the Yankees have not re signed. DJ LeMahieu yet. Okay, they got first base issues. Luke Boyd's great, but hopefully he's going to be, uh, you know, more of a DH. Who knows? The Yankees have so many holes to fill. Um, they actually need a shortstop. They need all kinds of help, especially if DJ LeMahieu doesn't get signed. If they do sign him, and Andor is Gigi Gregorius not going to come back? No, no, I doubt it. I mean, I don't even. Th- I haven't even heard that they're. What about LeMahieu? Okay, LeMahieu, that's the thing, right? That, that he's looking for a lot of money. <clears throat> and the Yankees have not gone up to four years and the amount of money that he's looking for yet. So he doesn't come back. He doesn't come back. Miguel Andujar may, may, may find himself a spot in the infield. Um, even if he does come back and Duhar, he's, he is playing very well in Dominican league. They have him in winter ball with a bunch of the other young Yankees, Esteban Florial, some of the Yankee prospects. And I actually, I actually, you know, I, I checked the stats on these games. I actually watched some of these games. You can catch them. <laughs> you can find some YouTube videos on them. And he looks really good. He, he's changed his swing up a little bit. He shortened it up a little bit. Um, he looks like the guy who was playing in, in 2018 and, and, and should have, in my opinion, won the rookie of the year. Everybody fell in love with Otani, uh, you know, the two-way guy. But um, that worked out, right? Yeah. So, but, but so, so here's, the, here's the little play on this one. The Yankees have not won a World Series in quite some time, and they're building up a team here. And, you know, they've spent money on a lot of players. And if they spend money on LeMahieu and they spend this money on – Garrett Cole and they go out and get pitching and the whole deal. Um, whether it's right now, before the season starts, or during the year, Miguel Andujar, who was basically just screwed out of Super 2 status and is under team control longer, is a huge, huge trading chip for these guys. Huge. So whether he finds his way up with the big club Yankees and finds his way into that lineup, or he's making headlines as the trading chip for somebody's starting pitcher or rental for the Yankees to make that playoff run. I have a feeling he's going to be seeing a significant time this year. And this is a guy who's already shown that he could put up numbers better than we've ever seen so far from Gavin Lux, who hasn't done anything from Bo Bichette, who was looking good. For a lot of these rookies whose cards are a hundred dollars, $150 and Duar's already shown in the major leagues, a full season of almost a hundred RBIs and 27 home runs. So all he needs is a shot whether that's with the Yankees or another team at 20 bucks, $22, it's a steal. So it's just a little under the radar. Again, we like to bring you stuff that nobody else in the world is bringing you. Um, if you're looking for a bargain play for not much more than the cost of grading cards, you can get a PSA 10 of this guy. And like I said, you're not gonna have much competition looking for stuff, but you're going to feel like the, the, the smart person when he's actually playing in the major for the Yankees next year, or he gets, or he's part of a trade and is playing for somebody else and tearing the cover off the ball. I love it, Cage. I love it. And guys, I, I while Cage was talking, I, I looked up the pop on uh, the Lucas Select. It, it's a thousand mm-hmm. on the PSA. Wow, that's just, light just... compared to all the Prism stuff. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I do want to uh, jump on here real quick. I want to pick your brain because today was a big day uh, in uh, Bitcoin and blockchain, and Bitcoin and cryptos got slaughtered. Really? How much were they down? Ten, fifteen percent down. Wow. And I, I, I wanted to have a discussion and actually someone from the community, Drake, helped me out a lot here because he said, you know, Andrew, you always talk about having criteria. Um, and since you recommended this play, you know, 18,000, 20,000, it's gone up 50%, right? In theory, based on your criteria, even if it's down from the 40,000 mark to the 33 where it's at right now, that we're talking about Bitcoin, sh- sh- shouldn't you sell and take your profits? Cage, is that how you think about it as well? Um, well let's put aside that. Let's say you bought into a car. You saw eBay listings for 40000 and sold for 40000 but then it dipped back down to 33000 You know, Do you wait and you know, hold and hope that it hits 40000 again? Or you know, maybe it blows through that 40000 and goes 50, 60? Well, it depends on, the, uh, depends on the fundamentals, right? If you're talking about a card, <clears throat> what made it go up to forty? 
to go up to 40, um, you know, because of long-term prospect. It'll go up to 40 because of, you know, that it's just a rare thing. You know, is it down to 30 now because it's just taking a beat on its way back up? I'll give you a comparison, right? <clears throat> People are out there right now paying a ton of money for LaMelo ball cards because he just had a 30 and 30 point triple double. That card it, today, tomorrow will go down 10, 20 percent, just like Bitcoin did. 100 percent. That's not a card I'm buying back because it ran up too much based on one small thing. Right, but but if you tell me that Luca's cards, which were two thousand dollars, okay, that because his team is playing five hundred ball, he looks a little pudgy. He's not averaging thirty five points, but maybe just the 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 FOMO run up has worn off, just like Bitcoin, right? And now the Luca card you can get at sixteen hundred, which is what a twenty percent drop from the two thousand it was at. That's different. That's not a guy who had a run-up because of one good game. The guy who's got a track record. Yep. The guy who that 2,000 was justified, and I think he had a good chance of seeing that 2,000 again soon. Whereas LaMelo might be a little more on the, uh, on the hope and a prayer kind of thing. So, so here's how I played it, and, and Drake mm-hmm. and I had a great conversation, and I did a little research on this, and it's a concept called profit-taking, right? Yep. Uh, so we always think about all or nothing, and Cage always talks about being an all or nothing guy, and I think there's some value in that. Yep. Uh, but truthfully, he just says that because he's not, and I always see him behind the scenes. And it, there's really a concept of take your profit, take a little bit over the profit too, right? You know, basically yep. get your principal back. Let's say you invested twenty thousand, now you had forty five thousand. Take your twenty twenty thousand out and leave twenty five thousand in. So that's something that I wanted to bring to to you guys. If you're invested in crypto. Remember that right now to this moment, more than likely you're sitting on profit and there's nothing wrong with profit taking while also understanding that you believe in the investment, you believe in Bitcoin long-term, but believing in something long-term and speculating about it is different from the reality of taking profit off the table, especially when you have an opportunity. So that's myself, what I did today. Uh, and I talked to Cage, I talked to Drake, because I think these subtle moments are really important. I don't think I'm the only one that deals with these things, right? These, these no, but you're the only one who had this conversation, sell your Bitcoin and buy a Mickey Mantle. No one else was told that today. <laughs> that is true. That's absolutely true. Because well, dude, it's so funny at 30, I want less, 31, I want less risky assets, but I hate having my money get slashed 10%. But they always say volatility cuts both ways, right? You know what I mean? Like volatility cuts both ways. It could lose 10% in a day, but it could go up 10% in a day. So no one ever lost money taking their profits off the table. So an important thing to remember, all right? I don't know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And you may be mad if tomorrow it's $60,000 and you didn't get that money, but you might think yourself a genius if it's 20,000 tomorrow. And you know what? Either way, it doesn't make a difference because you've made money. You know, you've made that decision and you've taken no money off the table, which to me, the same thing can apply with cards. Bro Namath is one of the best, most um, disciplined people we've had on. Yep. You know, depending upon the value of the card, he's got a 3X or a 4X or whatever it is. When he hits that, he takes it and he's done. And it goes by the system. And that way he's not looking back and saying, wow, I should have kept this. He hits his number and it goes and he sells it. So I, ha- I have to do a little work, a little more of that into my, uh, my equation as well. Well, I think it's so relevant because Michael Porter Jr., Tyler Hero, these types of players are the Bitcoin of the hobby, right? There's yep. people that have bought them for two, three hundred, and they've two, three, four X, mm-hmm. right? They, they, oh, yeah. That's just the reality. You could have got a silver Michael Porter Jr. card. You might have graded it yourself, and you're sitting on profit. And I think you know my decision was with Bitcoin, but it's it's a metaphor for a variety of other decisions that you make in the in the hobby every day. So I think it's a worthwhile. Problem. I love it. Listen, like I said, you know, if you face that, go ahead and take your profit. <laughs> that's what I would do, right? Use it and use it another day on something else. Love you, Luca Nation. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for spending some time with us on another episode of the Lucas Tigers and Bronze Oh My podcast. Um, do us a favor and like, subscribe. Now, you know what? Don't just like and subscribe. Everybody does that. If you like us, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your enemies, tell everybody. And uh, we hope you got something from spending some time with us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.